Hi folks, today I want to talk about the end-to-end -end principle, which is a very powerful way of how to think about where to place abstractions in a distributed system, and also how to think about abstractions in general. This paper was authored by Salser, Reed, and Clark, but as they mentioned later in the paper, the idea itself was known within computer science circles well before the time of publication. And the authors take credit only for articulating the idea and not necessarily coming up with it. So the central question that this paper deals with is choosing the proper boundaries between functions and where to place them in a distributed system. The best way to explain this idea is to work through a concrete example. Let's consider the problem of what they call careful file transfer, which is a very fundamental thing in networking. We want to take a file from one machine and transfer it across the network to another machine. And we want to make sure that the transmission was completed correctly, that the file at the destination is exactly the same as the file at the source. How does this happen? Typically, we read from the source file system. We transfer it across the network, typically splitting it into packets. And after splitting it into packets, the network moves the packets from the source to the destination. And at the destination, the packets are recombined and written to the file system at the destination. So that's a fairly typical network transfer. What are all the things that could go wrong with this. We could have hardware faults in the disk storage system of the source computer. We could have software bugs anywhere along the line that might corrupt the data. We could have hardware errors. The network itself might drop packets or it might corrupt packets. And we might even have crashes. So how would we design a system that can correctly transfer a file across the network given all these things that can go wrong? One approach is to make all the steps along the way really reliable. So we could use duplicate copies, we could time out and retry, we could have redundancy and error detection, and this would reduce the probability of each of the individual threats down to a very small value. But is this going to accomplish the goal? Even if all the steps along the way had a 99% chance of success, and there were five steps, that already brings your end-to-end -end probability of success down to 0.99 raised to the power of five, which would be around 95% that still gives you a 5% chance that a file will not be correctly transmitted. The alternate approach, and the one that the authors are advocating in this paper, is called the end-to-end -end retry and check. What we do is, with every file transmitted, we also transmit a checksum of the file, and then we recompute the checksum at the destination and make sure that the checksum at the destination is the same as the checksum of the original file. And only if these two checksums are the same, the file transfer application declares the transaction to be committed and successful. If the comparison fails, we know something went wrong and we retry. Now, in the common case where failures are pretty rare, this will usually work on the first try. And every once in a while when there are failures, we would have to retry. Let's compare this approach with the approach of making a really reliable network. Suppose that the network guarantees reliable data transmission. Does that solve our problem? If you look at the list of things that might go wrong we have only solved number four with a reliable network. There are still a number of other things that can go wrong and corrupt our file during transmission. 
This means that even in the presence of a reliable network, a careful file transfer application would still have to do some kind of an end-to-end -end checksum to make sure that it got the file correctly. And in this case, the extra effort that the communication system went to in order to provide reliability is mostly wasted because the system still has to do an end-to-end -end check. And this is the central idea of this paper, which is that the application program that is performing the transfer must supply an application-specific end-to-end reliability guarantee. So that's the ideal theoretical end-to-end -end argument, but modern systems are architected slightly differently. And the major reason is performance aspects. To understand this, we again go back to the file transfer example. And supposing we have a somewhat reliable network that drops about one out of every 100 packets. This means that the longer our file, the more poorly the network will perform in reliably transmitting it. The probability that all packets of a file arrive correctly decreases exponentially with the file length. This means that the amount of effort we put into making the network reliable has more to do with trading off based on performance rather than correctness. Note that there is a cost to making the network reliable as well. And the authors argue that there is not a strong case for pushing much in this direction, i.e. making the network very reliable, because you still need an end-to-end -end application level check. Another argument against placing these functions at low-level network layers is that the lower level system is common to many applications. And the applications that do not need the function or do not need that reliability will still be forced to pay for it anyway. So let's think about how this principle appears in the design of modern networking systems. We do have two major networking protocols. One is TCP, which gives you the illusion of a reliable end-to-end -end connection. And that does indeed do all the things that the author is asking not to do right here, which is to make the end-to-end -end network reliable. But several applications need that. And there's a whole class of applications that are built on top of TCP IP that do need a reliable end-to-end -end connection. But on the flip side, we also have UDP, which is a connectionless best effort protocol. And there's many other applications that don't need a reliable end-to-end -end network but latency is more important for them and that is a perfect fit for udp think about for example video or voice applications where even if you know one frame of a video gets garbled that's not a big deal you just keep going so here's a very interesting example of how exactly the application of this principle depends on how you identify the two ends that we are talking about in this end-to-end -end principle. So consider two people talking on a phone, a typical voice over network application. In this case, we don't want delays. We want the voice of one person to be heard at the other end as soon as possible. And even if there's some corruption in the middle, there is a lot of redundancy in the human hearing system and if things get really bad, one person can simply ask the other person to repeat what they have said. So this is a perfect fit for something like UDP or an unreliable network. So here we see that this argument is a property of the specific application, which is a real-time conversation, rather than of speech in general. If you change this example just a little bit to voicemail, now you're not listening to the message in real time and you can't ask the other person to repeat themselves. Suddenly a reliable network becomes a lot more important. You can wait a little bit longer to receive all the packets, but you need them to be correctly transmitted. 
And here we come again to the trade-off in this design argument. From the point of view of modularity, we would like to have a reliable in-sequence network. And that is something that a lot of applications can build on top of. But the end-to-end -end argument claims that the centrally provided versions of these functions will be incomplete for some applications and they will have to build their own anyway. And that is exactly why in modern systems we have network protocols which cater to both use cases. We have TCP and we have UDP. Now, the beautiful thing about this principle is that it applies to a lot of other abstractions in computers in general. And they have a couple of great examples over here. Think about the arguments for RISC versus CISC. The argument for a simple instruction set is that we can get better performance by implementing exactly the higher level things we need from primitive simple instructions. If we build complex instruction sets that anticipate high level requirements, we will probably miss by a little bit and the programmer will end up re-implementing their feature in simple terms anyway. Another example is for abstractions that an operating system exposes to higher level application programs. If we expose very complicated abstractions, there's a good chance that many applications won't be an exact fit for it and they will end up re-implementing their own slightly different version of it. This was experimented with in a line of operating system kernels called exokernels. So to summarize, the end-to-end -end argument is kind of an Occam's razor, which tells us where to put functions in a distributed system and argues for putting functions at as high a level of abstraction as possible or as high up in the abstraction stack as possible. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.